I see you looking at my chest. I see you checking it out. It's all right. Go ahead, look at it. Check it out. Check it out. In what universe do I ever want to watch your chest, bro? It's a nice chest, though. Oh my god. This has got to be the most hottest case in the whole world. You know, for decomposition to set in, you need a certain temperature. If it's too cold, the body won't decompose. So I guess this woman got what she deserved. Martha Randall was the only woman to be hanged legally in Western Australia. She was convicted of murdering her husband's son, Arthur Morris, in 1908. She was also suspected of killing his two daughters, Annie and Olive by swabbing their throats with hydrochloric acid. Does that already make you cringe? It's not the kind of stuff that you want to normally drink during a hot summer day, that is. I had to put away my headphones because they were choking me. Wouldn't it be funny if I would just choke myself to death while making this creepy news video? This woman was absolutely crazy because Randall killed 7-year-old Annie first. Her method was to put something in the child's food that would result in a sore throat. It was alleged that she killed the children by swapping hydrochloric acid on the backs of their throats claiming it was medicine. This would inflame the throat until the child could no longer eat and thus would starve to death. Annie died on the 28th of July 1907. Dr. Cuthbert issued a certificate stating the cause of death was diphtheria. You know, something else that is absolutely insane about this woman was when the police came to arrest this woman, the arresting officer, Inspector Harry Mann, said that this woman, this Martha Randall, delighted in seeing her victims writhe in agony and from it derived sexual satisfaction. Can you even imagine this woman having any sexual desires at all with this sort of face that she had? She looks like the fucking villain from a Batman movie, the wife of Penguin or something. I don't know, man. It's nasty. After killing Annie, she turned her attention on Olive, aged 5. Olive died on the 6th of October 1907, and again, Cuthbert issued a certificate stating the cause of death was diphtheria. In the winter of 1908, Randall tried the same method on Arthur, the third son and youngest child still alive. Arthur, who was 14, took longer to succumb to the treatment finally dying on the 6th of October 1908. Cuthbert asked permission for an autopsy. Randall said she wanted to be present during the investigation. She stood by as the autopsy was performed and the doctors found nothing to incriminate her. In April 1909, she turned her attention on the second son, George. It didn't take long for the second son to complain of a sore throat after drinking a cup of tea. Randall coated his tonsils with syrup, frightening the boy who ran to his mother's place some streets away. Neighbors would inquire as to the boy's whereabouts, however, his father, Thomas Morris, would state that he did not know. Neighbors went to the police and Inspector Harry Mann conducted inquiries. Mann heard repeated references to the children having their throats painted and Randall's apparent indifference to their pain. One neighbor claimed he often peeked in the windows to see Randall standing in front of the screaming children rocking back and forth as if in ecstasy. Man located George Morris, who had claimed to have run away before his stepmother had killed his siblings and was trying to poison him with spirits of salt. The inquiry was hampered by the period of time that had elapsed since the deaths and because doctors could not say what effect swabbing with spirits of salt would have. Suspicions were further aroused when it was shown that Randall had purchased large quantities of spirits of salts during the period of the children's illnesses, but none since the last death. Armed with this information, the detectives obtained permission to exhume the bodies and this was done on the 3rd of July 1909. Police exhumed the bodies of the three children. Diluted hydrochloric acid was found on the throat tissue. Randall and Thomas Morris were both charged with murder, the former being sentenced to death by hanging. Randall protested her innocence, maintaining that she was treating the children for diphtheria. Although Thomas Morris was also charged with the murders, he was acquitted. 
It was believed that, although he had purchased spears of salt, he had not been aware of the crimes until after the children's death. The jury wanted to find him guilty of being an accessory after the fact, but this was not allowed. I guess it only makes sense, because after all, it was the woman that killed these children. The man was innocent. He didn't have anything to do with it, I guess. Randall's crimes aroused considerable public outrage at the time. Randall's crimes aroused considerable public outrage at the time. The press portrayed her as a scarlet woman and wicked stepmother. She was hanged at Fermento Prison on the 6th of October 1909. She is buried at Fermento Cemetery in the same grave where serial killer Eric Edgar Cook was interred more than half a century afterwards. Martha was the last woman executed in the state of Western Australia. An illusion appears on one of the prison windows, which can only be seen on the outside of the window. When inside the church looking out the glass, it's smooth and even, with no unusual shape or texture. An example of the legend, the urban legend, is that the illusion is the portrait of Randall, who watches over the prison. It's in this picture right now that you can see on the screen, which is rather odd, because when I looked at the picture, I can kind of see a face in there. I don't know if it's the face of this woman, but since she was in that prison cell at the time, they speculate it's her. But that's how it always goes with any urban legend out there. It's kind of cute, also kind of tragic. But this woman really deserved the death penalty after all. Because why the fuck would she kill her own children? Stepchildren? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's go back to the actual facts of the case. Wasn't she a stepmother? Yes, she definitely was. And because of that, I don't know what got into her mind to kill these innocent children randomly. Because there's no motive to this case. Well, this article doesn't share any with us. Maybe she had motives, maybe she didn't. She seems like a real freak. That much was clear by the picture, or it almost looks like a sketch. If I'm really honest, if I look at the picture, it doesn't really look like a real photo at all. I'm sorry about that. Like the intro and stuff, it's a sketch after all. But I mean, this woman was pure evil. Killing her by hanging wasn't enough. You should have ripped off her toes, all of them. I, and her fingers as well. Wait, I'm getting off topic right now. I shouldn't be sharing with you the way I would murder someone like this. Anyways, glad she's dead. And I hope her children, or I mean the victims, are resting in peace. As always, dear viewer, have sweet dreams.